Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, you're welcome to this wonderful uh, Sunday uh, power service. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone on Facebook. Hallelujah. Everyone on YouTube, on any other social media platform. God bless you for connecting today. And I know you will be blessed because you have been here in the presence of the Lord today. And you are going to be blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just continue. Uh, I'll be handing over to Pastor Marie to share the word for today. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to pay attention to what God is saying. When God, when God is speaking, it's good to pay attention. Hallelujah. So that we can get to know the heart of God concerning this season, this time. Praise the name of the Lord. So over to you, Pastor Marie. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good On the morning. day of Pentecost, a very Hallelujah. happy day for the Amen. church. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Fulfillment of Joel, the prophecy of Joel, Joel yes. 2, 28 to 29 to pour out his spirit on all his people at the end times. This is the fulfillment came on Pentecost Sunday. It was 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven. Uh, the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit was sent. He promised he would send the Holy Spirit. So Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. And we, we, we delight and we enjoy what you are doing in our lives in Jesus' name. Because we know Amen. your spirit is present with us. Lord, revive us today. Amen. And sanctify us once more today, Lord. Set our Amen. hearts on fire today with the good news of the gospel today. Bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. your faithfulness, it reaches beyond the clouds, your faithfulness, Lord. Yes. Thank oh. you, Lord. So we know that Pentecost was, it was a harvest festival. They celebrated it as a harvest festival and they brought the first fruits of the harvest to the Lord. So today, like, um, we we celebrate it because we are, uh, are bringing, you know, those people to the Lord, that those souls, Lord, we are bringing them. We want to harvest souls, Lord. Mm -hmm. in, 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 this is what we want to do, Lord, you know, in, in this day. Uh, we, it, you know, it, God's harvest for souls in the world. This is the important thing to us, that, that we go after lost souls in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Uh, so we know that in Acts, that the Holy Spirit fell on, on the house first you know uh, and the whole house was filled so the building first it fell on the whole house first before it came upon the apostles so we ask the spirit of the living god to fall afresh on our homes today and Amen. on us today in the name of jesus Amen. and 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 jesus he predicted the holy spirit and he said that we would be witnesses so help us all to be witnesses to the people that we've been praying for. The, you know, all the during these last couple of weeks, I've been praying for five people, you know. So I pray, Lord, that they will come to know you and to serve you and be faithful witnesses to you in Jesus' name. So if you haven't been already having people in your mind, just pick, pick some people in your neighborhood, some people in your family that are not saved in Jesus' name and continue to pray till you see his word fulfilled in their lives. Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so we know that a crowd gathered in Acts 2 and 5.12. A crowd gathered and they heard them speak in their own tongue. And yes. what, there was confusion in the town because they said, what does this mean? You know, so we want confusion to be in our local towns. And people say Absolutely. when they see us, what does this mean? All this fuss in foundation ministries or in the churches around. We want people to be asking these questions today in our streets. What does all these, this mean? Those people praying and fasting and they're always going to church. They go many, many times a week and they start to ask questions. Praise the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 at the Tower of Babylon, uh, God turned one language into many languages, you yes. know, uh, because he, he confused their language that day. And we know that we have a beautiful multicultural people, you know, we have all different languages, even in this country, you know, they're, they're from all over the globe, from every country you could name, we have them here in Ireland, and praise God. So God Amen. is going to set all our hearts on fire. So we're going to ask the Lord to send the fire today in Jesus name. Amen. And we praise God that his word is going to feed us today. And his Holy Spirit will lead us 
today. Amen. Now, uh, we ask ourselves the question, how is the baptism in the Holy Spirit sustained in our lives today, in believers' lives? How do we sustain it? We sustain it by prayer. We sustain it by witnessing. By worshipping in the Spirit. And by leading a good life, a sanctified life, sanctified, a holy life. So, the, you know, if, if not, the, the, the Holy Spirit infilling that we have, you know, it will start fading away if we don't keep on doing these things. You know, we have to, we have to feed our spirit. We have to feed our spirit with these things. We have to pray faithfully. We have to witness. We have to worship in the spirit. And we have to live a, live a sanctified life. Um, in Acts 4, verse 8, there is fresh infillings to be found because Peter received a uh, fresh filling and it brought a sudden inspiration to him and it brought wisdom to him and it brought boldness for him to proclaim the truth of God. Do you remember Peter, he had healed the crippled beggar at the gate uh, and uh, himself and John, they were going up to the temple and, and, uh, and they healed the crippled beggar. Um, so, but they were put in jail overnight from all this that happened, you know, they were, and the next morning they were brought before Anna, Annas and Caiaphas and all the leaders of the law. Uh, and after the release they, they prayed and when they went back to their people it says it says that in 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 acts acts 4 verse 31 um and it says um and they told the people there everything they reported everything that the chief priests had said and then they said after they prayed they gathered together for prayer the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So fresh infillings are available to us. Don't think because you were baptized in the Holy Spirit once, 10 years ago, five years ago, two months ago, that there isn't fresh infillings. There is always fresh infillings of the Holy Spirit, you know, and we can ask for those. And the more we pray, the more we pray, the more we worship, the more we witness, the more fresh infillings will come upon us in the name of Jesus. We have another account of a fresh infilling in Acts 7, verse 55, and it was at the stoning of Stephen. And it says, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. How wonderful. That was a fresh infilling Stephen got. They were ready to stone him and yet his face was shining. His face was shining. And Paul was one of those who held the cloak to stone him. And we see the change that came in Paul's life soon after in the name of Jesus. So today I'm going to concentrate on what it is to walk in the spirit and to walk in the flesh. Because we've been all filled by the Holy Spirit, but we must continue to walk in the spirit. So, you know, when we all first became Christians, uh, we could accomplish some things, but not very much when we were young in the spirit and didn't know much. Um, no matter how mature we are, we, we can never be uh, productive unless we are walking by faith and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, as a new Christian, uh, you know, sometimes we can feel, and I know I did, I felt I was spring-loaded uh, and, um, and I could do everything. This is what I thought. And it's just true. It's just true. But you, you must, you must um, start um, reading scripture and developing and maturing in the Lord. Um, so new believers, we're going to live according to what we know. And um, we don't know very much when we start off about the spirit-filled life. Um, so, so the will of a mature Christian, it's definitely loaded towards the spirit. It's spring-loaded towards the spirit. Um, we can make 
often occasional, sometimes poor choices. But we are daily, we are every day, we are learning to crucify the flesh and to walk by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. So every day is a learning experience to crucify the flesh. You know how the flesh rises up and it rises up daily. There's no doubt, but we have to try and, and crucify the flesh. Uh, walking by the spirit, we know, is relationship. It's all about relationship with God. Uh, you know, in a, in a marriage, you know, there has to be communication and has to flow naturally from two who love each other, you know. So an example is prayer. You know, we may have learned to pray uh, and the way I learned to pray first was using the word acts, A-C-T-S, adoration, you go into adoration, confession, thanksgiving and supplication. And that's good. Uh, but if you're a Christian for a few years uh, and your prayer life is no deeper than that, you know, you have never learned to pray by the Spirit. And, and in Ephesians 6, verse 18, and it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. On all occasions, it says. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So prayer is a, a two-way communication with God and it requires listening as well as petitioning. And Paul defines it uh, uh, to walk by the Spirit. He says in Galatians 5, in 16 to 18. So I say... Live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Verse 17. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They're in conflict with one another. So that you do, so that you, you do not do what you want to. And verse 18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Praise the Lord. So we have to learn to be led by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. That's what he's saying. For the, the flesh sets its desires against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. For they're in opposition to one another. So that you may not do the, the things that you please. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So what the Spirit-filled walk isn't, what it isn't, I'll say, what, what the Spirit walk isn't. Um, Sometimes we, we wrongly think that walking by the Spirit and living under grace means I can do whatever I want to do. But walking by the Spirit means you may not do the things you please. We, you may not do the things you please. Even a child wants to do the things that they, they please to do. But we have to learn that we cannot do the things that we, we please to do or what we want to do. Living by the Spirit doesn't mean you are free to do whatever you want to do. It means you are free to live a responsible moral life. And that's something we are incapable of doing when, when, we're, when, we, when we were a bond servant to sin before we were born again. We were incapable of doing that. So what some people think is freedom, it's nothing more than a license that leads to bondage in our lives. Freedom doesn't just lie in, in the exercise of choice, but it lies in the consequences of those choices. So supposing I tell a lie, um, I'd have to remember who I told the lie to and what I told them. But I'm free to tell a lie, but I know it's sin to tell a lie. 
But you see, when you start telling lies, you get all wrapped up and you don't remember what lie you told. You don't remember what you told and it gets more and more and more and you become more and more in bondage. So the spirit of truth will always lead us to freedom. But the desires of the flesh always leads us to sin and to bondage. So God's commandments, they're not restrictive. We know that they're not restrictive, but they're protective for us. They protect us. So our real freedom comes when we live responsibly within the context of, of God's protective guidelines. He's established those for our lives to, to protect us, these guidelines. So we want to always live in God's guidelines. Secondly, if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Galatians uh, 5.18 tells you that. You're not under the law. If you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law anymore. And Galatians 3.10 says, listen to what Paul says here. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse, you will be always a guilt-ridden or a driven person if you're under the law. Galatians 3.21 says, Is the law opposed to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. Verse 22 says, but the scriptures declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. The law is powerless to give life. So praise God, we have life. We have life through the Spirit. We have life through the Spirit. So telling people what they are doing is wrong. Um, it does not give them the power to stop doing wrong. When we tell people that's wrong, it doesn't give them the power to stop doing what is wrong. Um, we say to them, maybe don't smoke, don't take drugs, don't play cards, don't do Ouija boards or, or any of those things. Um, we are the servants of the new covenant, not of the letter of the law. Praise God but of the spirit for the for the letter kills but the spirit gives life the spirit gives life so that's what gives life to us the spirit gives life so when we're telling people they need the spirit to give them life 2 corinthians 3 6 the law was a tutor to lead us to christ that we might be justified by faith so the law was just a tutor leading us to christ that we must might be justified by faith. Galatians 3, 24 and 25 says, now that faith has come, we are no longer under, under the supervision of the law. Praise God, we are no longer under the law. We've been freed from the law. So what is the spiritual walk? What is that? We have gained liberty. It's liberty. It's neither a license or legalism. It's liberty. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. So thank God for the Holy Spirit. We have liberty. Our freedom in Christ is one of the most precious things we can, the most precious commodity that we have received uh, for our spiritual union with God. So the spirit of the Lord is in me and it's in you. You're free to become the person God created you to be. You're no longer compelled to walk according to the flesh as you were before your conversion. Praise God. You're not even compelled to walk according to the spirit, but you are inwardly bent towards that direction. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, you have the choice to walk according to the spirit or to walk according to the truth because God has given us a free will. 
Walking according to the Spirit says two things to me. First, it's not sitting in the Spirit. No. It's not sitting around in a sort of a, a holy huddle, expecting God to do it all. And secondly, it's not running in the Spirit. The spirit for life, it's, it's not an endless round of exhausting activities and doing and doing in which we are trying to do it all by ourselves. No. And then doing all this by ourselves, we're thinking we will become more spiritual if we try harder and harder. So this is sometimes a typical error we make, you know. Um, so if, if Satan can't, tempt us to be immoral, he'll simply try to make us busy, 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 doing, doing, doing. So how much fruit can we bear if we try to do it all by ourselves? And my answer is none. Because in John 15, 5, it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So how much gets accomplished in the kingdom of God if we expect God to do it all by himself? Not much. I know he's God. But God has committed himself in this age to work through us, the church. If you look at Ephesians 3, verse 10, uh, we have the privilege to, to water and plant and God causes the increase. That's what it says. Corinthians 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6 to 9 says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. And verse 7 says, So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. Praise the Lord. Verse 8 says, The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his labor. Verse 9, mm -hmm. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. We'll continue in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. When Jesus sends out this invitation, and he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we know in the days of Jesus, you know, we're talking about yokes there. You young people listening in, you may not know what yokes are. But uh, Jesus worked with his father, a carpenter, and I'm sure his father and him made lots of yokes because there were donkeys and oxen and all in those days. We know there were no cars or anything like that or no JCBs or anything like that. So they would have made uh, yokes and they would have made doors and things like that, you know, and, and household furniture and probably and a lot of machinery and things okay. for animals. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Hello? we can. Okay. We okay. can. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Jesus would have been making these products. So sometimes he used these products to describe spiritual life you know because he knew people would understand you know because of those things that, that were in use in those days um for instance remember he said he's the door to this to spiritual life in john 10 verse 9 mm -hmm. so a yoke it's a wooden beam that fits over the shoulders of two oxen and um um so it, 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 there has to be two oxens to use it. Like it wouldn't work if there was only just one because um, he would pull and go the wrong direction and all that sort of thing. Then there needs to be two. Uh, 
if it, it only works when they're yoked together and pulling in the same direction. So a, a, they always put a young ox and a, an older ox that was trained together to do the things. My father did this because uh, in my day, they, they plowed with horses and all those sort of things. And um, we, we had a neighbor's uh, horse who was, he was a wild sort of a fella, you know, and ours was well trained and like he was older and all that. So th my father had to have two to do the ploughing. So th he was uh, what you call, um, what did they call it? They were yoked with each other, the neighbours, for the for the, the season of harvest. And um, uh, when they were doing the harvesting, they had our horse and we had theirs when we were doing our harvesting. That's the way it was. And it was called a mehel and people would come and help each other out and all that sort of thing. Um, so um, they, they were they were put together to do this. So um, um, so the usually, although um, in Hebrews five verse eight it says, uh, and it's talking about Jesus here, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Jesus himself learned by experience the, the, the suffering and the cost that um, often resulted from faithful obedience to God in, in the corrupt world he was in. Uh, and he became a perfect saviour and um, a high priest because uh, his suffering and death, they were accomplished without sin. Therefore, he was qualified in every way to bring us eternal salvation. So, I'll go back to the horse again. So the nature of, of the young horse uh, of, our, of our neighbor was to think um, the he, he, he wanted to go ahead of our horse. You know, the pace was too slow. Our horse was too slow and he wanted to run ahead. Um, but then all that was happened to him is from all the pulling and thing, his neck would get sore because of the tug of the other horse trying to bring him back. You know, and the restraint of the reins by 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 the driver, you know, it would it would hurt his neck. So, um, he he had to learn over the years, you know, that it wasn't good to have a sore neck. So in Isaiah forty verse thirty to thirty one, it says, um, "Though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous, mm -hmm. young men stumble badly. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain." new strength. So we mustn't be hasty. We must wait for the Lord so we can gain new strength so that we won't be injured in not waiting and going ahead in Jesus' name. They will mount up, then it says, with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. So some young oxen that would be tempted to drop out well, you know, and they'll, they'll maybe stand up and not want to go. And I remember this happening, you know, uh, because he was just fed up with this pulling and tugging and then he would refuse to go. So um, uh, then one day the young ox, he, he'll still, he learn, he learn. This fellow never learned that we had, but, you know, um, the, the old ox knows um, what he's doing, you know, and what he, and l like the, the shepherds we have, they know what they're talking about and they know what they're going to do. So, uh, so I think the young ox will learn from this, you know, and we will learn from those that are shepherding over us. We will learn, we will learn, we will learn from the, from the commandments of God. We will learn from the scripture. We will learn. So we, we're being led by the spirit. We were told, we we're told in Romans, 8, 14, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Yes. So you did not receive the Spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. You received the Spirit of sonship. That's why we can call out Abba Father. Abba. And he is the shepherd and we are the sheep of his pasture. That's John, John 10, 27. So this takes on a new meaning for us today, Pentecost Sunday. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And Paul said in Romans 8, 14, he says, for all who are being led by the spirit of God are sons of God. 
So we have to be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. We are sons of God. So what's the proof of that? The proof is in the fruit, isn't it? How can you know if you're walking according to the Spirit? So we take a look at Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident. These deeds which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, all things like these. So we all know where we stand on those things. Each one of us know where we have difficulty, where we have to sit down at night and say, you know, did I walk in the flesh in that way? Or did I walk in the spirit? These deeds, they're, they're, all these are dead acts. And they do not reflect the life of Christ in any way. So if we have outbursts of anger, um, or we are living according to the Spirit, um, are we living to, according to the Spirit if we have outbursts of anger? No, we're not. Because so, that's a deed of the flesh. And we ourselves have to assume responsibility for that and our own attitudes and actions. And we have to repent of that. So we need to walk in the light. And number two, we need to learn to confess our sins. So to continuously agree with God when a deed of the flesh becomes evident in our lives and mentally acknowledge it ourselves to God and ask him to, to, to fill us with his spirit anew and afresh again. Amen. And the more we practice these things, it's that's discipling ourselves. The more we practice these things, we're discipling ourselves. And the more we will live according to the Spirit. Yeah. Every day we suggest, we say to ourselves, you know, did we walk by flesh or by spirit today? You know, and there will be always something we're walking by the, 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 by the flesh. Nearly no day goes past, but we walk by the flesh in some way. You know, so that's where we have to have this, that strength of the Holy Spirit always. So because the, what, the, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Then we look at the fruit. We're going to just look quickly at the fruit of the Spirit because I've gone over time. Uh, we're going to look quickly at the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. It says, love, joy, have we love? Have we joy? Have we peace? Have we patience? That's a big one, the patience, isn't it? Kindness. Have we goodness? Have we faithfulness? Have we gentleness? Have we self-control? So fruit, fruit comes from something that's living, doesn't it? All the fruit of the trees are living things, isn't it? Yes. So it's... It, it, the fruit is a result of abiding in Christ. We have to abide in Christ to bear the fruit. He said to, to abide in him and we will bear much fruit. And what's the ultimate expression? It's love. Yes. That's the character of God. The character of God is love. God is love. God is love. That's it. So 1 John... 416 says we have come to know and have believed the love which god has for us god is love and the one who abides in love abides in god and god abides in him Amen. praise the lord praise Amen. the lord so we have to learn how to abide in love we have to Learn to abide in the Holy Spirit all the time, to pray in the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, not to rely on ourselves, because it's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory in Jesus' name. You know, so 
it, it's just because of the, of the Holy Spirit, we have we have received the Holy Spirit. And for those who don't know about the Holy Spirit, today is a great day, a great day to come to the Lord. Come as you are. The invitation is there, heavily laden, burdened, and I will give you rest. It's a promise. He doesn't say if you do this, if you do that. He just says, come as you are. Come as you are. Come as you are. I will forgive you everything. I will take away all your past. I died on the cross. I took away your sin, your guilt, your diseases, your sickness, your sorrow. He has taken all these things on the cross and he's putting out an invitation to us this morning to come to him. Come, come. He's going to give us new life. Come as you are. Don't be ashamed. It's it, it's pride that keeps you from coming to God, you know, and the devil is telling you, you know, you can't go look at the state of you. You can't go to the Lord like that. And he's trying to tell you, you know, if you do this, if you do that, do that, do that, and then you might be able to come. But for Jesus is saying something completely different this morning. He's saying, come, come to me, all you that are heavily laden and burdened. And he's giving you a promise. It's a promise. And when he makes a promise, he keeps his promise. I will give you rest. He forgive you your sins. He clean you from all unrighteousness. He will make you whole. He will give you a new heart. He will put a new heart in you. The heart of stone will be gone. He will give you a heart of flesh and he will fill you with your Holy Spirit. He says, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And what a, a day to ask for, for the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit to be released in you. Because we can't do the works of God on our own, in our own strength, because we run out of strength. And, 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 and when we have the strength of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, he releases the power to do the works that, that he wants to do in us and through us. We, we are his witnesses throughout the world. So praise the Lord. If you haven't made that prayer of commitment, all you have to do is come repent of your sins and ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can do it. You can do it in the quietness of your room, in the quietness of if you're in bed now, wherever you are, you can say, come Lord Jesus. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me all my my sins, the, the sins of the past. He forgives you all your sins, your past sins, your present sins, your future sins. Hallelujah. I am sorry that I, that I have offended you and I repent of everything and I want to live that new life that you have promised me. I want to reject the, the Satan and all his works and all his prompts and I want to live that new life with you. I want to be sanctified. I want to be made whole and thank you, Lord, that you're hearing my prayer and I want to be filled with the fullness of you, of your Holy Spirit, that you're willingly want to give me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to help us to live that sanctified life in the name of Jesus. And uh, we're going to pray that he will help us to worship him in spirit at all times and, and, to, and to pray continuously and to witness for him in the name of Jesus. And we pray for his grace and empowerment uh, and to, uh, to examine ourselves daily. Uh, if we are walking in the spirit, we're going to pray that we would be able to do all these things in Jesus name. Father God, we place all these th prayers before you in the name of Jesus. We Amen. want to live that sanctified life. Thank you for your grace, your enabling grace we ask for today. Your enabling grace to, to help us in the name of Jesus, to live that sanctified life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Teach us how to pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus to worship you in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus. Oh, increase, increase that desire, Lord. Increase that desire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, increase our desire to witness for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your empowerment and your grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus, teach us daily, Lord, and help us to examine ourselves in the name of Jesus. That we are walking in your spirit. That we are walking in obedience. In the name of Jesus, that we are not walking according to the flesh. In the name of Jesus, help us to live in peace and harmony with one another. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and to know.
know that you are love. You are love. You are the God of love in the name of Jesus. The help us to abide in that love, to abide in that love in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, that the fruit is a result of abiding in you, Lord. Help us to bear that fruit in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. To continuously agree with you, Lord. Help us to continuously agree with you. That we will live according to your spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the fruit comes from you that is living, Lord, as we are abiding in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. For that transformation, Jesus. Lord, yeah. only by the Spirit, Lord, to take place in our lives, Lord. Praise in the Lord. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.